We have fire. I think they're... It's burning down pretty good now. Hello, Bill here with Pale Horse Survival and Tactical. Glad you could join me for another episode. Today we're going to take a look at the Grand Fur. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome back. What we have in front of us here is the Grand Fur, also known as the Silver Fur. The uh, botanical name is Obius Grandus. It's the uh, tallest out of all the, the fur species. And this is the fur right here. It's tucked in between a it's tucked in between a uh, ponderosa pine on one side, well two ponderosa pines, ponderosa here and uh, another one on the other side and then there's a cedar back behind it, incense cedar. So this is the grand fir. They prefer a, a fairly wet habitat. Uh, they're in a pretty uh, a pretty wet habitat. They can get over uh, 250 foot tall. They're the tallest out of all the fur species. There's even been specimens found that were uh, 300 foot tall. They uh, you can make t uh, tea out of the needles just like you can uh, pines. It has kind of a citrusy flavor and not the terpene flavor that uh, pine uh, imparts into the tea. Kind of a lemony uh, flavor. has all the uh, the uh, health and nutritional benefits of uh, pine needle tea. They uh, will take a closer look at the needles here in just a little bit. Uh, the resin, we'll also take a look at some of that. The resin has, uh, it's an antimicrobial, uh, the same as uh, pine resin is. You can also make uh, primitive glue out of it, same as pine resin. Uh, Native Americans use the bark to uh, make uh, primitive containers as well as canoes out of it. They'd actually remove the bark off of a trunk and uh, turn that into a canoe. They're native to the uh, Pacific Northwest. And uh, we'll go ahead and take a little closer look at some smaller uh, species and a closer look at the bark here actually. Let's cruise on over here and look at the bark. The bark actually changes as they mature. The young, uh, the young ones, the bark's kind of silvery and smooth. And as they get older, the uh, bark becomes more furrowed. Close-up of the bark here. Let's, uh, let's uh, cruise on over. We'll take a look at... Uh, a couple of the younger ones. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome back. I'm still uh, working my way over here. Here is one that's uh, actually not looking all that well. It's right next to a, an incense cedar here. You get a look at the uh, the younger bark. I think this tree is diseased. It doesn't look very good at all. But you see how the bark is different. It's lighter colored. See if I can find a better, better example here. Here's a, a better one. You can see how the bark is smoother and kind of silvery, silvery looking here. And the needles grow out flat and horizontally from the branches. And then if you flip it over and you look at the undersides here, see the two silvery bands, those are uh, stomata bands, stomal bands, 
And that is how it gets its name, the Silver Fir. Those are two, uh, two parallel bands on the underside. And that is the easiest way to tell the uh, fir, the grand fir. Right next to it here is a, uh, there's a ponderosa pine. You can tell by that reddish, reddish tint on the bark there. This is a huge, huge ponderosa. Really big one. Stay tuned. I'm going to see if I can find some sap over here. Here's a, a little one over here, and you can see some of the sap here oozing from the branch. If you have a cut, just like pine resin, if you clean the cut well, you can take that resin and uh, it's an antimicrobial, spread it over the cut and it'll act as a liquid band-aid. A little bit more of it up underneath here. You just have to kind of search around to uh, to find it. I'm trying to find some resin blisters, which some of these are uh, famous for having. And you can pop the resin blisters on the bark and get a lot of clear liquid sap. Now here's a young this is a young seedling here, and you can see the bark, how smooth that is. That's very indicative of the young, uh, the young saplings. Everything just kind of grown in here together. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome back. I'm over here uh, at another young sapling. And this one has resin seeping out of it. If you pop these, it's usually liquidy inside. And that is the resin. That is also a good fire making resource too, just like pine resin. It's very flammable. And here's some more right here. Uh, there it is. That's that's a resin bubble. Pop that, and that's gooey. I mean, it just oozes out of these. I'm gonna wipe this off before it gets all over the camera here. But you just have to kind of you get it on your fingers. I mean, it's really sticky. But it's a good fire making resource, just like pine resin. It uh, it is very flammable. It's really uh, it's a good resource to help get a fire going. Now since we've popped this, you can see all the fresh resin coming out of there. Just kind of push on it. You can milk that for some... That could be milk for fresh resin. Bear in mind that the, the resin uh, it's the young saplings that seem to uh, ooze that because the bark's a lot thinner. When they get older, the bark thickens up, and you really don't see the sap on those as much. You'll find it on pine trees, but not so much so on the fir. But the young ones, uh, you just look around the young saplings, uh, just about everyone has the, the resin blobs and bubbles and uh, blisters, and the stuff stays uh it stays really uh, uh sticky it takes a long time for that to dry uh pine resin seems to solidify a whole lot quicker at least uh from what i've uh, from what i've seen anyways i hope you enjoyed the video as much as i did making it today uh, please like subscribe and share i hope all of you are having an outstanding day or night depending on where you're located and i will see all of you very soon on the next one everybody take care bye bye